Welcome to our podcast series, Marianne's Musical Soiree, where Marianne shares his unique insights and reflections on his international musical heritage. I am your host, Jay Knox, and this afternoon, we will be discussing the recent historic exhibit in Vienna entitled, My Song for You, dedicated to Marianne's parents, the Polish tenor Jan Kipura, and the Hungarian soprano Marta Eggert. This exhibit was held at the famous Exilata Center at the University of Music and the Performing Arts in the beautiful city of Vienna. Today, we will be reflecting on the performance we gave earlier this year on May 20th at the Liszt Hall at the University. Marianne, please tell us more about the exhibit and the role that Exilata plays in remembering so many artists who, like your parents, were forced into exile from Europe upon the rise of Nazism. Indeed, Jane, uh, the Exil Arte is dedicated to the many artists and musicians who, like my parents, were forced into exile in the 1930s. My parents lost many friends and colleagues to the Holocaust, and those who escaped, their lives were forever changed, and my parents' lives were forever changed. So this exhibit brings light to these facts and the lives of artists affected by the rise of Nazism in Europe. And they're being remembered and their music is being performed. Marianne, I know it was a very busy time for you in Vienna and you even did several radio programs prior to presenting the May 20th program dedicated to your parents. But why was Vienna so very special in your parents' lives? Their paths to stardom started in Vienna, a city where they met where they fell in love in a city which they loved. My mother was brought to Vienna as a very young woman by the operetta composer Emmerich Kalman, who discovered her. My father started on the stage of the Vienna State Opera by way of an audition and sang Tosca shortly thereafter with the great soprano Maria Yeritsa. Later, he helped create the role of Kalaf in Puccini's Turandot, and Erich Wolfgang Korngold's opera Das Wunder der Heljane with the great German soprano Lotta Lehmann. So my parents made their first movie also in Vienna called My Heart is Calling, or in German, Mein Herz ruft nach dir. Sadly, it is a city where my parents both had to leave in 1938. Today, we're going to share some of their recordings we played on May 20th of this year in Vienna, to a large audience at the University of Music and Performing Arts in commemoration of the Marta Eggert and Jan Kippura exhibit. Marianne, you began by playing a solo piece in the Liszt Hall in honor of your parents. Please tell us about this piece and why you chose it. Yes, there is a song by Frédéric Chopin that I used to accompany my mother in, among many other songs. And of course, I learned her operetta repertoire. We toured for a while. After my mother passed away, I was looking through some music and discovered that a particular song that I used to accompany her can be played as a solo piece because the accompaniment line is the same as the singing line. It is called Dumka, D-U-M-K-A, and it was listed as Opus 74, number 19. So I thought it was interesting to, just as a devotion to both my parents, to open the program with this particular work. Thank you, Marianne. Chopin's Dumka song is a lovely piece. 
Following your performance, Dr. Professor Gerald Gruber, Chairman of Exil Arte, addressed the audience on the significance of the artistry of Jan Kipura and Marta Eggert, and the work that has been done at the centre, not only to remember them, but others who had to flee Europe due to the rise of Nazism. We will now hear Marta singing at the age of 78 in 1990 at the Robert Stoltz Gala in Linz, Austria. Mein Liebeslied muss ein Walzer sein, which translates, a song about love must be a waltz. This was composed by the great operetta composer Robert Stoltz for his operetta Im Weissen Rössel, lyrics by Robert Gilbert, who by the way also had to flee Austria. My father's mother wanted him to become a lawyer and not a singer. She thought singing was a completely unserious profession that had a very shaky future, so he went and studied law, actually at the University of Warsaw. But his singing talent soon caught up and was knocking on the door, and he was discovered early on. He ended up singing on the opera stages of the world, including uh, the Warsaw Opera, La Scala in Milano, 
the Metropolitan Opera, Chicago Opera, the Vienna State Opera, also known as Wiener Staatsoper, Paris Operas, Buenos Aires, and elsewhere. Here is an early recording of a very young Jan Kippura singing from Rigoletto, of course the very familiar aria La Donna Immobile. We just heard Jan Kippura singing the famous Duke of Mantua tenor aria, La Donna Immobile, from the famous Verdi opera Rigoletto. We are now going to hear Marta singing a beautiful song from her 1936 movie Das Hofkonzert, entitled An dem Reinstens Frühlingsmorgen ging die Schäferin. The shepherd girls go out on a beautiful spring morning. The music is by Edmund Nick, a German operetta composer, and the words by the great German poet Goethe, based on his poem Die Spröde. For many who study film, you may be interested to know that the director was Detlef Serk, who fled Europe to Hollywood where he became Douglas Serk and made many Hollywood movies such as All That Heaven Allows with Rock Hudson and Jane Wyman. But here is Martha singing, Andy Reinstein's Frühlingsmorgen ging die Schäferin.
That was Martha Eggert singing An dem Reinstens Frühlingsmorgen ging die Schäferin. The shepherd girls go out on a beautiful spring morning. We're going to hear next a popular song at the time called Weine nicht, or Don't Cry, by the operetta composer Robert Stolz. Now, this song and others were inserted into serious themed musical films, like my parents' movie The Charm of Bohème, known in German very famously as Zauber der Bohème. It is a real-life story of Bohème, where the main characters really fall in love, and she, Mimi, of course, played as Denise, really does have a serious illness and does die in the last act. But there are subplots, and these songs were essentially pop songs at the time. Today they're classics. You see, my parents made musical films which, with their producers, were designed to be, I want to say, accessible to the general public. So audiences who were not inclined to go to the opera or could not afford to go to the opera went to the movies. So their movies brought serious music along with hit songs at the time. Today these hit songs are classics. <laughs> In 2007, Marta gave a memorable performance at the Jewish Center at the Leo Beck Institute in New York City. 
Here she is, aged 95, sharing with her enthralled audience the difference between working with Emmerich Kalman and Franz Leher. They were always friendly rivals, but Marta will tell it her way. When I came to beautiful Vienna in 1930, and uh, to do Emmerich Kalman's operetta, Das Fähnchen von Montmartre. And one Sunday I was invited to Lehar, one Sunday I invited to Kalman, and always they were good friends, Lehar and Kalman, very good friends. And they both loved me very much because they told me, Du bist unsere Zukunft, that I should do operetta for the future. Well, I did my very best because I made many operettas also in films, and not only in German language, but I did also in French, and some of them even in English, but not for the United States, because the United States did not want our pictures here, because they had their own singers. Until today, I mean, you don't see foreign pictures in a big movie house, until today not. So it was not against us, it was against the language, you know? But we did English films for England, and they were very successful there. And I tried to do all the operettas like Chadas Fürstin, Wo die Lerche singt by Lehar. It was very interesting to work with both of them. They were totally different types. Lehar was more sweeter and more um, easygoing. And if I said, Maestro, would you accept if I do, do uh, something else? Oh, 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 something like that, coloratura. He said, yeah, do it, do it, that's fine. Kalman, no. Kalman said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's what you want. No. no. <laughs> so, of course, I was a little bit uh, more let's say, more liked Lehar, because he was easier. Kalman was very, very serious that every, every bar, everything must be exactly like he wrote it, you know, which I respect that very much. But still, you know, I liked it my way. Speaking of Franz Lehar, we're going to hear a duet now with my parents from Lehar's operetta, Der Tsarevich. And you will see here the inventiveness with which they delivered this. I can, I can remember from my childhood how they practiced in our living room. My father would say, let's try it this way, and I'll do this, and you do that. And my mother would say, that's a good idea. Let's try it again, and maybe a little differently, and so forth. Always to be better, to be more inventive, to be more artistic, to bring more joy to their audiences. And the surprise ending is indeed a surprise. Nur du, nur du, 
es fließt ein Sieg, das er mir uns zu, nur du. Geliebte, ich bin ja so glücklich mit dir alleine, fern von allen Menschen. Es ist wie ein Traum, ein Märchen. Was hast du? Warum bist du traurig? Nichts. Ich denke nur, dass alles so vergänglich ist und auch die Liebe. Aber nicht unsere. Denk nicht daran. Sei glücklich. Ja, ich will es sein mit dir. For joining us for the special Exil Arte podcast honoring Jan Kippura and Marta Eggert. I am your host Jane Knox and it is always a great pleasure being with you.